Now on to crime movies with Cage. There are a total of 15 movies, which is why this is part one, starting with seven, and then the other eight will be next time, probably next month, The Cotton Club. So I'll be honest, this is a movie not for me. This whole movie is essentially an homage to jazz music in the 1920s and 30s, which is a time that I don't really care for. The movie's fine, and also I didn't realize that it was a musical, and so there's a lot of music cues of like the story and then cutting to a musical part. It's like, oh, I did not know this. I mean, this is nice, but but this isn't really for me. The only thing I did like was James Remar. He's in a movie, which is pretty cool. I do like him for what I've seen from him. He's good. And then Nicolas Cage, he's in it for like, I don't remember, like a little bit, 10 minutes, but he's in it. And this is his filmography. So I have to talk about it at some point. He's in it. That's it. You know, I don't know. What is the plot actually? I forgot. Crime stuff, because I feel like a lot of early 20s and 30s stuff was gangster related slash mob stuff and, you know, mafia shit. So that's probably there as well. I forgot about it. And then that's pretty much it a very short short way to talk about this movie because again i don't really gravitate towards it it's not really for me really Raising Arizona was the complete opposite, where it was a lot of fun and is actually pretty damn good. The movie opens up with a prison montage of Cage always going back to prison, him getting tired of it, him meeting his girl named Ed, I think? It's Ed something, but I'm gonna say it's short. And then very quickly, you find out that he's tired of it. He wants to be with this cop lady who her boyfriend just broke up with her and then she's going through a lot of stuff. Somehow gives her this ring. She says yes. And then that was all just the first 10 minutes of this montage of getting a house, of getting a baby and whatnot. And so I thought at first, this it's actually pretty funny where he's with like a bunch of babies there's like five babies and i was like damn okay they already have five kids and no that's not the case at all cage is in fact trying to steal a goddamn baby his name is nathan jr and so i thought he was trying to you know get all of these kids to go to sleep and everything but no there's like the, the parents are downstairs reading the newspaper and then they're hearing sounds and whatnot and cage and his wife and i was trying to you know steal a goddamn baby because she can't have a kid and then you got his prison friends which the way that they're introduced or i guess reintroduced is them coming out of the ground in the mud kind of like zombies being raised from the dead that was pretty awesome they were promised i guess safety from cage and now that they're at the house with a kid that they kidnapped it adds a whole lot of stress and anger to the whole situation and now that's a problem as well the in-laws which the guy wants like a trade-off between the wives which cage is not down with that whatsoever punches him and then the dream sequences which i thought weren't gonna come back i thought they were just you know funny one-offs cage has a dream about this guy who's like night rider or not night rider but ghost rider type villain slash character where he's all dirty he has a beard he's got guns grenades on a motorcycle shooting every living thing possible that crosses his way and i did not expect him to come back later on because there's a twenty five thousand reward for finding nathan jr and so him facing off against cage was a lot of fun and then there are multiple times where you think he's gonna die and then cage finally does it pulls a pin off of a grenade and he dies in a awesome and satisfying big ass explosion and then there's even that dream of like him the camera going through the neighborhood up the ladder and then in that woman's mouth and then there's even that chase sequence where cage is trying to get diapers for his baby or not his baby but nathan you know what i'm gonna rob this place because he's trying to stay clean for his family but can't quite do that when he has these urges to just be a criminal again and so that leads into the whole chase sequence of cops coming by dogs coming by going to the supermarket to get diapers because he's trying to be responsible but also be a criminal as well it's this fun chase and it leads back to him leaving that diaper in the road coming back for him to get it and so by the end he got the diapers but in a very interesting and kind of stressful way and so by the end you have cage and ed wanting this baby his prison friends is that wanted for the money and then you have the ghost rider guy who wants it for the money as well and he just wants to kill any living thing and so this move is just ridiculous but in a good way where a lot of it is fun and for the most part it's like you know what i'm down for this cage eventually takes the baby back to its rightful owners and the father doesn't press any charges and he's like oh, okay brought it back so yay the movie then ends on a very hopeful kind of end where in a dream again dreams of having kids and having grandkids both of them being old which i'm assuming it's because of what happened with you know motorcycle ghost rider guy i forgot his name this is going to become true it's just a future in a dream that he likes to think about and it'll probably come true deadfall which we're going back into very okay mediocre movies i don't care about the main thing i'm going to talk about is cage because everything else i don't find really all that interesting the main character i think he's pretty bland i don't really care about it i don't remember the goddamn plot if i'm being honest don't remember at all but cage is great in this movie he's a standout i think it's about like framing the other dude or jealousy or something cage is crazy he's kind of that well-known kind of out there crazy ass nicholas cage apparently he has a bald head he's kind of a fraud in terms of his look 
look because he wants to impress his boss or hold on oh, okay never mind i remember so our main guy has to locate viable like items from his father who just passed away and so cage is kind of there watching him trying to fuck him over as well i think after through just okay meaningless type scenes that i don't care about the fight happens and he's bald and then the way that he goes out which i find just so funny both good and bad he gets deep fried his face gets deep fried comes out he has a fried face and uh that's how he goes out you know i was like okay this movie's dumb it's okay but when i got to this part it's like, okay this movie's not i'm not taking this movie seriously at all whatsoever even though the tone of it seems like it should be taken seriously i feel it's not really every time cage comes in he's like just kind of crazy crazy nick cage you know but yeah that's all that's all of the nick cage stuff in this movie i just don't really care about this movie it's fine it's whatever trapped in paradise which i was a bit confused by the fact that this was a crime movie but it's a crime comedy slash adventure and that's because it's a christmas movie which i do find that most christmas movies do suck they're not all that great not everyone can be you know home alones and krampus and i don't know what else really but cage has himself and two other brothers and they're on this trip because they want to get away from the house because his brothers are troublemakers i think they get out of prison at the beginning of the movie and so once they come home it's like okay chill the f out i'm gonna assume that he's the older brother and he's more serious more like has a life unlike his other two we get to this point where essentially robbing a bank but they're actually trying because it's so easy and so in typical like family adventure and maybe christmas family type movies where someone hates the family member they go on his adventure including robbing banks and getting in trouble with the law and crime and whatnot and then by the end they're all together you know they're just there having a great time christmas music in the background have yourself a merry christmas and all that stuff it's great it feels very very formulaic you know like this movie is fine it's okay it's not as forgettable as deadfall at least i remember you know he had two brothers they quote unquote rob a bank even though it's easy and i don't know that's it really kind of feels like a time waste but it's not it's a typical christmas movie so i guess watch this movie for christmas even though this video is being released in june or late may or something i think may either way it's fine kiss of death now we're back on you know good movies where cage is a crime lord mostly a really badass crime lord and then there's like that 10 percent that's like he's goofy because he has sunglasses with a mustache and goatee and it's like is he gonna go over the top here however when he does get over the top it doesn't take you out of the movie or you're not like laughing at him or laughing at it it's more okay this makes sense because he's kind of creepy and scary as a crime lord in this club and then we have our main character jimmy who is a convict and so a district attorney and probably including like the fbi and what Whatever, they ask him to frame cage in order to you know be free with his family and so that's the best part about this movie jimmy every time there's a scene with him and cage like in that bathroom of being like super suspicious but the indian he's like nah come on you're just being jimmy right throughout the whole movie it's very much atmospheric tension building type stuff and it's really good having to frame someone that you know is a badass and will obviously kill you in a heartbeat and so trying to control that but then also trying to work for his own family because he wants to see them all of that's very stressful this whole movie is that essentially and then you also got samuel l jackson in this movie being a cop still working like all these years like the fact that he's not retired or he doesn't want to is like you worked a long time dude you know maybe you deserve a break but no he's still going at it and then supporting his family stuff again he's kind of being tested and not blackmail but kind of where the attorney sees that he's gonna be let go but it's kind of like maybe a lie because he doesn't really trust him as well and so by the end he kind of has to play both sides where he eventually frames Kate, but also wants to convince or not convince but just be 100 percent certain that he gets his family back and he's completely free and by the end he does so to anyone watching this video go watch this movie it's actually a good crime slash like mob slash mafia slash gangster type movie that genre for the most of it it's tension it's atmosphere it's like will jimmy get caught by cage will cage you know and he does but caught on a bit too late that part of the movie is good there's other stuff like the family stuff and the attorney fbi stuff cage being just absolutely crazy but the movie is good in its atmosphere sunny which i did not know by the way was directed by cage i did not see that so when i saw the credits roll up i was like directed by nicholas cage what the heck and it was actually good and so i thought it was weird that this was a part of his filmography because he's in a movie in his bar talking to james franco that was just a scene of him in his cameo because he's directing this movie and so cage directed a movie that there's just no happiness in this movie at all until the very end which feels a bit kind of cheesy but no one's happy in this movie james franco the girl that he's with his own mother no one's happy franco is playing a 
a soldier coming back from war and he wants his life to change because his brother's into prostitution. He also was a male prostitution before leaving for the army. The girl that she has over is also one as well and so he's tired of that life. He wants to get another job, wants another life, but he can't quite do that. He cannot get away from that life because he can't find a job. It's very hard and so it eventually leads back into him being a male prostitute and there's some scenes that are like this is like hella uncomfortable you know this like old lady kissing from his ass or whatever body language and expression of like i don't want to do this he wants it to be something else but he can't do that his mother is not the best forcing something onto him like that very early on is like she's very persistent about prostitution and so that's kind of not a negative but kind of something i notice of god damn there's no happiness it gets a bit tiring you know just being like i'm getting tired of watching this movie because no one's really happy but the way that it ends with his girl which by the way i forgot her name totally forgot by the end she's in a car with her dad she gets out sees Franco running they hug and kiss and it's like okay maybe that's a bit much because the whole movie was just about wanting out of this life and whatnot and then in the end just kind of this tonal clash i feel like but it was a happy moment so as a direct movie from cage it's good like it's actually directed well it's acted well by franco and the mother and the girl it's a movie that i don't think i would ever rewatch because it's so just dour and down and just kind of not happy at all which is the whole point but also on you know rewatchability do i want to rewatch this no but it's a good film and then finally lord of war which the only thing i knew about was the intro of this movie because i watched a corridor crew video of the pov of the bullet the factory and then in a box opening up closing it open close it and finally being used in a gun shooting a kid going through the head like that opening sequence gets you already interested in this movie and so it's about nicholas cage and how he gets in a very dangerous world of selling guns to warlords and just suspicious ass people really and that's kind of his downfall where he's really good at this job but then the people that he's talking to and interacting on a day-to-day -day basis or maybe not day-to-day -day, but just you know every now and then they just look like they would kill him in a heartbeat if he says something wrong or doesn't offer enough money or whatever and so family further away worry about himself worry about getting all this money but then also at the meantime possibly get killed because these people seem unhinged his brother played by jared leto at first it was just both of them you know making like bullets or whatever selling them then after a while it gets to his brother and he starts freaking out a bit jittery and so he has let go of him he's on his own now and for a while he does a good job you know like he gets married to his wife which is a beautiful model that he knows from his own place he's able to con his way into her life have a kid and whatnot and you know props to him because he's good at his job but also good at lying to her essentially and then everyone knows watching this movie that she's gonna you know catch on to this at some point and she does she likes to him right in his face just like he did to her and all these other people about money and his life and she catches him with very suspicious people you know with guns and bullets and whatnot and has to you know let him go essentially same thing with his brother he's like you know what he wants back in guess what first thing that happens he gets killed he's so jittery and kind of like it's like yo relax gets him killed cage is obviously heartbroken by this but it's also like you didn't tell your wife you lied to her and then you brought your brother on which you know he has an issue of like just panic attacks and just being jittery and whatnot and so that's kind of what i got out of this movie cage himself gets in trouble by like this one guy and he's stuck in his land there's like a time lapse of this plane getting taken and cage is still there tied up this is on you you brought this to yourself like i would not be able to do this i would get the hell out immediately if i see a guy getting like one of my guns or whatever selling it to him and shoots another one of his dudes because he's like talking to his girl smiling he doesn't like that has no problem just like shooting him i'm out i'm not about that life i'm doing his thing because he's good at it and that's both a positive and a negative because his wife is away from him now and his brother's killed but on the positive he's making money and he's doing well for himself and that was it for part one of the nicholas cage crime movies for the most part i like this you know you got movies like deadfall and trap in paradise but you know raising arizona was fun lord of warrior was fun his direct movie was also like good but i would also not rewatch because it's so not happy at all whatsoever it's so down and negative in a way but that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching